Welcome back to the channel. Jim here. Thanks for stopping back in. Today's topic is one that interests a lot of divers, and it's a very emotional topic. It's about whaling in Japan. I'm going to talk about what I heard, and it's kind of a conspiracy theory. I'd like to hear what you think about it. Stay tuned. Now, the first thing I'd like to say, I'd like to not talk about the morality or immorality or anything about surrounding whaling. I just want to talk about this conspiracy theory that I heard. Now, on the surface, whaling in Japan seems to make little or no sense. And here are the reasons. Uh, number one, there seems to be no natural domestic demand for whaling meat. For example, I've heard a lot of it is warehoused almost indefinitely because there's no demand. And I've heard that there's some efforts to artificially promote demand subsidies. Also, whale meat gets occasionally sent to schools. So actually, my sons used to have whale meat day at school. That's one of the things they do at public schools. So there seems to be little or no demand for the actual meat to justify the harvesting of the whales. Because of this, it would seem to make little or no sense for whaling to exist here, especially in the light of all the totally negative outward pressure and some inward pressure as well, and the bad image that it gives. So a lot of people just ask, myself included, why would the country stick so doggedly to something that seems to be hurting the reputation more than the benefit? Because not a lot of demand internally or externally and the bad face that it puts on the country. When I had inquired about this through the scuba industry and other aquatic industries, I ran into some interesting opinions. It's about 10 years ago now that this began. And what I heard was, is that whaling is actually a red herring. It's a decoy. And what it's a decoy for is to decoy attention away from more serious aquatic matters vis-a-vis -vis tuna fishing and other fishing stocks that are more important, more widespread, and those collapses would be catastrophic. So tuna fishing, as China comes online, the people there become more affluent, they can start affording tuna, and the demand goes up. That puts a tremendous stress on the stocks, also other Asian countries as well. And tuna is just the largest species that this is a concern about. There are lots of other smaller species whose fishing numbers in recent years have become sensitive. Saba is, is one of them as well. So the thought is that the whaling issue, as improbable as it seems on the surface, is attracting, it's a big attraction, attracting attention away from other food issues that that actually will be more dire issues for humanity as a whole. Now, that being said, I would like to mention that Japan, I think, does an extraordinary issue managing their fisheries in general for tuna and these other fish. In fact, uh, to see an example of that, if you did a search, or maybe you saw the picture of tuna cowboys on National Geographic, uh, the program where tuna are captured, juvenile tuna are captured all over the Pacific and dragged back in these giant nets to be raised in Australia um, in a very apparently sustainable way. That's one example of Japan doing very well with aquaculture. Now, I'm putting the whaling issue aside, but Japan is generally respected for doing a very good job with their aquaculture management. And I think in that sense, um, they're doing they're doing well. However, that being said, I did hear that whaling is the bait that's taking the attention away from the more serious issues. Let's hear some discussion. This is what I heard. What are your thoughts on that? Thanks for stopping by. See you on the next video.